back again to another UML tutorial. And in this tutorial I'm going to continue building on the class diagram tutorial and show you how you can create a constructor in a class diagram. Uh, constructors are not by default supported in UML, therefore we need the stereotypes that I also used in my previous video. So yeah, let me show you how it's done. So a constructor is essentially also an operation, even though the syntax in Java is a bit different. But sticking with that idea, I'm going to drag a operation to my existing class diagram, and I'm going to give it the name of the method of the class, in this case person. Okay, so what I now need to do is the following. I need to, again, go to Profile, click on Apply Stereotype, and choose Java Method. Okay, so now the stereotype is applied, I can unfold it and actually see all sorts of properties that apply to Java only. So is constructor in this case will make this method a constructor. So I'm going to select it, then choose true. Okay, save. And why do I need to do it here? Because if I look at the default UML properties, okay, I have things like abstract and static, but there is no constructor setting here. So therefore, I need to add the stereotype, like with every other method, and then set inside the stereotype as a constructor. Okay, then this is basically how you model a uh, default constructor or null constructor. So let's do a overloaded constructor, which is a bit of an advanced topic. Why? Because the overloaded constructor has uh, parameters. So again, I'm going to name it person. And let's just do the properties first. So own parameter. In this case, well, I want to set the name, age, uh, and gender. So name, direction is in, visibility is public, the type is string. Then let's add another property, h, which is a integer. And lastly, I want to set the uh, gender, which is hr. Okay, so there we go. Uh, three parameters are set, no return type because it's a constructor. Okay, now let's go back to profile. Add the Java method stereotype. And then set is constructor boolean to true. Okay, let's save. So now basically I've added two operations that represent my constructor. Um, my class diagram has become a bit big, so let's just... Uh, Increase the package a bit, and the class will automatically change with it as well. I might also make it a little bit bigger here. There we go. Save. Alright, so now I of course want to generate my Java code again. So best thing to do is to just delete the project that I already had with my old code. And then say once again, Java, generate code. Okay, so person class diagram is created. Again, the data package is there. And the person class. And in this case, if I scroll to the bottom, I can indeed see my two constructors there. Okay, so let's tidy the code a little bit. Get rid of those comments. Uh, even though comments are very useful in a Java program, in this case, it makes my code a little bit too, too long and difficult to read, so let's just delete them for a moment. Okay, let's do some formatting. There we go. And even though my constructors are at the bottom, ideally in a Java class they should be at the top, in between the first method and the attributes, so there they are. Okay, and now I can actually go and implement them. So in this case, uh, I'm just going to leave the default constructor. Actually, I'm just going to leave the default constructor for what? Nah, all implemented. So name is null. Age is zero. Gender is 
U for unknown. And hobbies, I'm just going to keep them to null as well. Okay. Then for the overloaded constructor, even though I have a separate video on overloaded, on overloading in on over the overloading topic. So there we go. Now the values are. Well, I'm gonna leave this one as null. So now the received values are set to the attributes using the overloaded constructor. And that's all there is to it. That's how you do a constructor in a Java class diagram. I hope this video is useful for you, and see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.